Assalamualaikum dan uh, selamat kembali ke Pakai Fikir Ini episod ke-5 eh? Episod ke-5, episod pun tak tahu uh, Kita ni tak tahulah harap, harap uh, episod ni keluar sebelum raya Sebab kita berbincang satu topik yang selalunya seasonal uh, Saya rasa benda yang paling sedih sebab mengenai topik ni ialah dia seasonal Hanya bila musim-musim tertentu saja kita bercakap tentang topik ni dan uh, topik ni sebenarnya mendatangkan kesan yang sangat besar kepada negara dari segi cost in terms of the human cost uh, and uh, also it is something yang memalukan kita sebenarnya di, di Asia Tenggara ni uh, kita punya rekod antara yang walaupun kita mempunyai antara jalan yang tercantik eh terjalan ah uh, cerita tentang keselamatan jalan raya dan uh, Malaysia kalau kita bawa kereta di Malaysia ni saya rasa Lebuh raya kita elok lah. One among the best maintained in the region and possibly even in the world. Sebab fasiliti semua elok. Tetapi kadar kemalangan tinggi. Jadi untuk berbincang sikit tentang cerita kadar kemalangan ni, kita dapatkan seorang yang ahli lah dalam uh, ilmu ni untuk kita fikirkan. Sebab kita fakir-fikir. Jadi kita ada Profesor Lau Teh Hua daripada Institut Putera Malaysia. Institut Putera Malaysia, Institute of Proceed. Center of UPM. Uh, so, uh, you are obviously an expert in the field. Uh, and um, how long have you been uh, inside the Road Safety Research Center? Oh, You're the head of Road Safety Research yes, Center. I'm the head of the Road Safety Research Center. Uh, I started my career in this field mm. since 1997. Mm. Okay, I do know. So, this is almost uh, 27 years 27 already. 27 years. 27 yes. years. So, dalam tempo 27 tahun mm. tu, what is the thing that you can say first about road safety in Malaysia? Okay, saya nampak yang road safety tu, since day one, if, saya masih ingat tahun pertama saya join, 1997, kita punya jumlah kematian pada tahun itu, mm. tapi sekarang, nearly 7,000. 6,000 to 7,000, dia patut naik turun. So, secara amnya, saya nampak ada peningkatan dadak. Tapi jika you tanya kita, adakah kita uh, ada positive effort ke? So, saya rasa ada. So, jika tidak, kita tak buat apa tu, mungkin dia akan mencecah sampai 10,000. Okay, so, 6,000-7,000 tu, um, that's an absolute number lah. Yes. But, uh, statistically, is that better or worse than before and how would you measure that? Okay, secara am, jika kita tengok other countries, tak ada so, it's not a problem anymore. Uh, you rejoice to Sweden. Sweden is so-called they are the best in the world in terms of road safety. Sampai dia ada vision, zero fatality. Tapi you pergi to Sweden tu, dia tak semestinya, dia tak masuk. Tak ada kemalangan, tak ada kemadian. Mm-hmm. Uh, dia pun meningkat, tapi dia punya peningkatan tu dia amat kurang. Mm-hmm. Jika tak saya saya, dan tak saya, it's between 500 sampai 1000 saja. Right. Uh, tapi dia tak pernah meningkat. So that's why, if you refer to our country, 7000 tu, kita tak boleh kata, oh 7000 is okay. Dah lama tahun, dah banyak tahun kita 7,000. Kita kata 7,000 bolehlah. Sehingga super, uh, saya rasa tak boleh. Kita sebab tengok tengok 7,000 tu. Dah more than 10 years. So stagnating at 6,000, 7,000. Okay. Dia, dia naik. Okay. Lepas tu dia uh, saturated 6 to 7,000. Kadang-kadang dia tengok lah. Tengok tu uh, dia, dia mungkin ada color dia naik sedikit more than 7,000. Tapi biasanya for the last 10 years hmm. is about like 6,000. Okay, but given that there's population growth, hmm. uh, stagnating road accident number seems to be a good thing lah. Jika kita tengok, okay, of course lah, jika kita compare the road safety performance hmm. by the number, kita nampak jika, jika kita tengok dari segi index tu, dia menurun. Tapi menurun tu terimprove. Okay, then we improve level. Like we said, kita kata uh, berapa kematian per 100,000 population. Mm-hmm. Of course, if dia punya figure, index figure ni increasing, it means that kadar ke- mm-hmm. tak. Tapi ini maksud kadar peningkatan dalam kemalangan jarak itu, dia masih kurang daripada kadar. Tapi this is not something like we should say, oh, kita rasa lega. So, means we want to do more in order for us to go to the lower level sehingga kita sampai 1.5 kematian for 100,000 population. Sekarang? Kita 2.3 something. 2.3 something. So Sweden berapa? Sweden is 0.4, 0.4, 0.4 something. 0.4. Kita target kita? Kita target if we want to achieve one. Achieve if one. we achieve one, kita boleh kata kita adalah negara yang maju in term of road safety. So 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 the measurement of uh, uh, statistic tu, they have death per 100,000 of population. They, it's still just a standard that you pakai. Okay, biasanya, jika hmm. kita nak compare with other country, hmm. we always like to use 
berapa kematian per 100,000 population. Mm-hmm. Okay, tapi kadang-kadang kita pun nak compare berapa kematian per 10,000 vehicles. Per 10,000 uh, vehicles. Dia okay. punya implikasi tak sama. Kalau the, per 10,000 vehicles, how do we fare? Uh, per 10,000 vehicles, kita lemah. Okay, berapa kita punya... <laughs> <laughs> Itu bila kita, kita ada cross-country comparison tu, kita index per population. Okay, tapi kita, jika kita tengok per vehicle tu, kita ada uh, penurunan, tapi penurunan tu tak mendadak. Sebab utama ialah kita ada hmm. sampai hari ini kita tak ada satu jalan atau satu cara yang yang berkesan untuk mengurangi motosikal. Hmm. Uh, compared to other country. Uh, okay. So okay satu before we go to hmm. uh, kind of vehicle yang kita patut gunakan. Uh, kenapa kita gunakan uh, uh, death per population or death per population of vehicle? Uh, kenapa kita tak guna metric lain contohnya macam death per 100,000 kilometers driven or miles driven? Uh, typically or commonly, dia tiga. Satu, hmm. dua yang kita dah sebut. Hmm. Per population, per week. Per... Ada satu index ialah per 1,000 kilometers hmm. of roads. Hmm. Uh, of roads? Ya, apalah mana untuk lemahan. Hmm. For example, population tu, hmm. kita punya population tu ratio. Hmm. Orang muda, orang tua tu. Hmm. Uh, jika satu negara tu, dia big population, ramai orang tua, hmm. orang travel. Selamatlah. Hmm. Sama juga jika vehicle, hmm. kita count the number of vehicle that classified. Hmm. The road also the same. Hmm. Kita kata 1,000 km, it can be highway, it can hmm. be normal, normal road. But anyhow, itu sebagai satu proxy. Hmm. Uh, tapi jika kita buat cross-country comparison tu, biasa kita tak tak commonly kita guna per 1,000 km. Hmm. Uh, tak guna? Tak kata. guna. Kenapa? Uh, that is just uh, 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 compared to uh, roads available in the yeah. country, but I'm saying kilometers driven. Oh, itu kita panggil VKT, Vehicle Kilometer Travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Kenapa is that tak? is the most accurate. Do That's, we use that? We don't use that. Kenapa? Sebab kita tak orang buat, tak ada orang buat, tak ada peruntukan. <laughs> Sebab per population tu, kita tak, terus tak ada. Mm-hmm. Tapi nak dapat VKT punya index tu, mm-hmm. kita mesti buat survey, collect data, kita dapat VKT. Mm-hmm. Why VKT is not is not commonly used, commonly used globally? Sebab mm-hmm. Banyak negara yang pembangun tu dia tak ada. Only a small number of country ada. That's why it's not commonly used to make the comparison. Hmm. We we kita pernah ada dua tiga tahun saja. Lepas tu uh, sebab tak ada penting peruntukan, tak ada tak ada kelajuan tu. Lepas tu kita dapat. I see. Uh, so saya kita kena cari peruntukan lah. Untuk, that statistic I think is most accurate kan? Yeah, right? hmm. How far we travel hmm. per person. Okay, so the next thing tadi yang you sebut dan banyak orang juga sebut ialah tentang bilangan motosikal atau jalan raya. Okay. So, uh, how important is the number of motorcycle on the road okay. um, in terms of the accident rate? Uh, as, as we all know, motorcycle tu dia kurang selamat. Ini ialah sebab the ber- dia dua roda. Lah. Dia tak roda. So, kita dekat, dekat kita ada seatbelt, kita tak airbag. Tapi bagi motorcycle, helmet. Hmm. Helmet tu pun tak janji akan protect dia. Hmm. So that's why dia amat uh, vulnerable. Uh, dia kecil, susah dia nampak. Biasa kita, sebelum kita langgar, kita tanaman tanaman dia. Bila kita langgar dia, mana? Sebab dia kecil. So, kita tengok kita punya statistik. Lebih kurang lah. Dia pun ada up and down. Uh, dulu masa saya join the industry, 60% motorcycle. Hmm. Yang lain tu ada, tapi tak kita, dia minority. So it's about 60 to 40. Sekarang kita dah sampai tu about 50-50. Bila 50-50 tu, itu dia paling mahal. Kenapa? Sebab, you tengok yang kereta tu, dia punya tu. Tak, dulu 60 tu, 60 was motorcycle. Motorcycle. Hmm. Tapi if you look at like, some other country, our neighbor country like hmm. Cambodia. Hmm. Cambodia, you, you sampai sana tu, you akan nampak macam semua motorcycle. Hmm. Hmm. So, masalah ni, mereka tu dia kurang sikit sebab dia more homogeneous. Right. Uh, so, the, the homogeneity so, lah. So, kita terkena-dengar yang negara barat tu, Nak cari satu motosikal pun susah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, 99-94% are more. Mm. On the other side, yang negara membangun, membangun tu, macam Cambodia tu, more more than 75% or 80% dia motosikal. So, mereka bukan kata mereka tak ada masalah. Tapi kita di tengah-tengah, half-half tu, dia lagi uh, mencabarkan. Mm. Untuk kita selesaikan kita punya masalah keselamatan. Mm. So, imagine, 60% of the motorcycle, of the fatality are motorcyclists. Hmm. Tapi mereka hanya lebih kurang 50%. Means that they are over represented. Hmm. Okay, so that's why hmm. jika kita mampu ada satu uh, buat satu, satu satu regulation tu, semua orang tak guna tak boleh guna motorcycle, ban motorcycle for example lah. Then we can see that our mode, our fatal, our road safety problem will be cut half. 
look at how then very soon we will be like a, a, a developed country but of course i know that this is impossible mm. okay, to be implemented in our country mm. uh. so okay so uh, reality is 50 50 lah huh? yeah. number of motorcycle and number of cars is 50 50 so that makes it difficult lah. but what about um uh, the the driver or driver training itself. Uh, how much of a role does that play in this situation here? Because, like you say, kalau banyak motosikal, then motosikal dengan motosikal, kalau accident kan, ah? <laughs> less lah, less lah. <laughs> yeah. They sama same size kan, yeah. Yeah. Like, you, they spot themselves a lot yeah. easier. Mm. But kalau banyak kereta, kurang motosikal pun, kurang mati juga sebab tak banyak kan. Ah? So now we are at the 50-50 ni, macam mana kita nak buat ni dengan kita punya situation ni? Kan pasal, to ban motorcycle would be very difficult because it's also unfair. Right? Uh, so, macam mana kita nak buat ni? What is it the thing that we have to do? Okay, saya rasa cara yang paling sesuai ialah uh, of course, many people say that we do nothing. Sebab kita kajian, kita punya uh, research market tau yang peningkatan pengguna motosikal tu dia tak akan selama-lama ni. Mm-hmm. Sebab kita akan makin kaya. Whether mm-hmm. we are good or not, mm-hmm. over the years, mm-hmm. kita akan makin kaya. You compare to like 30 years ago, compare to now, we see that. So, we have to go through the path. Akhirnya, kita akan nampak penggunaan motosikal tu akan kurang. Hmm. It can be the, the car become cheaper. It can be, uh, we are more, uh, it's more affordable to our to our public. Hmm. It can be like the grow or the improvement in public transport. Okay, hmm. here. Hmm. But the thing is that, when is going to happen? Takkan hmm. tutup mata tu tunggu sampai masa tu? Hmm. No, I think it's not ethic. Hmm. So that's why when we look at the issue of motorcycle safety too, they are the long term and short term. Okay. Long term, of course, kita nak improve public transport. Mm-hmm. Don't stop. Never mm-hmm. stop. Mm-hmm. If possible, give more money. Mm-hmm. Give more money, find more, make it more comfortable to attract them. Bila, kita tengok yang public transport tu, kita nak attract yang non-public transport to use public transport tu, yang paling mencabar ialah nak, macam mana nak kita nak attract. Sebab guna motorcycle tu, dia, dia Most convenient. jimat. Mm. Okay, jimat. jimat. Convenient. Tak macam kereta. Mm. Kereta nak bayar petrol, bayar dua tu dia uh, uh, dia tak, dia tak akan trap in the congestion. Yes. Okay, the only thing is not good for them yeah lah. The rest, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. you can you can start your journey anytime. Mm-hmm. You can park everywhere. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's, it's quite difficult. Mm-hmm. Therefore, we have to leave it to the expert and also the government, the policy maker to think about how are they going to improve the public transport in order for them to attract the motorcyclists. Mm-hmm. But while waiting for this to happen, this won't happen in like one or two years time. Mm-hmm. It may be take more than, more than that. So while waiting for this to come through, to, to achieve, kita nak tengok short term apa yang kita nak buat. Apa yang kita boleh buat. Ah. So banyak benda yang satu yang cara yang lebih sesuai ialah kita nak cari segigit mungkin. Oh. Uh, jika kita dapat buat sedemikian tu, means that there is no conflict or less conflict. Mm. Uh, it depends lah. Mm. Like for example, yang motorcycling along the federal roads, federal highway. That yes, is the yes. that is the the first motorcycling in the world. Mm-hmm. In okay. the world. In the world. Oh. Kita ditolong oleh uh, World Bank during that time. I think oh. it is something. In the world, oh, okay. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, That's the first in the world. First in the world. Okay. okay. In the world. It kind of shows lah, uh, because uh, some of the corners are very dangerous. Like, like yeah, yeah, they were not sure yeah, what they were doing. Well, okay, but fine. So, like, now I understand a little bit why some of it seems to be poorly designed. It's the first in the world. Okay. That is standard. I forgive. Uh, okay, 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 okay. But better than nothing. Better than nothing. Better. Uh, hmm. Sampai yang ada dah macam Brazil. Brazil hmm. maker tahun lepas maker buat buat dengan dia punya bike motorcycle. Maker datang satu lomongan tu. Uh, specifically datang sini tengok kita bangga motosikal hmm. kita bangga rasa bangga lah yeah, yeah, tapi yeah, yang yeah. tu paling best sebab dia ialah kita panggil eksklusif eksklusif you masuk you tak boleh keluar kereta tu pun tak boleh masuk yeah. dia dia ada physical barrier yes that is the best of right. course very expensive very expensive dan like, kita tak boleh buat retrofit tak boleh kata kita buat sini tak boleh sebab jalan lebih minat hmm. tapi kita pun inklusif inklusif ya kita kita bau jalan tu cukup lebar tu kita boleh modify dia jadi motosikal Hmm. But itu dia punya dia punya efek kurang sikit. But better than nothing. Tak sungai petani ya lah. Yes. Okay, banyak lagi. Hmm. Okay. Saya so, tahu sebab so kampung saya sungai petani. Sungai petani. Saya tahu. <laughs> kita tengok bilangan ni sebab motosikal tu buat everywhere. Mm-hmm. So that's why kita we need to build more motosikal. Mm-hmm. Ah, jika kita buat tu mm. with the enforcement then kita akan pisahkan mereka to certain extent tu you akan nampak effect. While waiting for the good time to come. They, they have another, another choice. So that's why I said that to handle this problem, we have the short term, we have the long term. Kata buat motorcycle itu untuk membajir. Like what you see just now, nak satu hari itu akan kurang. Tapi hilang satu nyawa tu kita kira lebih kurang tiga minit. 
Mm. 3 million tu. So what's the so 3 million per life and we losing 7000 uh, lives. Huh? No, so that's you carry lah berapa? 1 billion lah. Oh. Mm. Itu is a statistical life lah. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a estimate. Mm-hmm. Sebab you bukan kata you mati saja. Mm-hmm. Sebab you mati, you keluarga, you uh, kerja tak orang tak buat dan sebagainya. Mm-hmm. It's around, around average lah. 3 million. Okay, so yeah. itu macam kira-kira that's the physical solution lah. Yeah. Huh? Put a uh, uh, motorcycle lane. But what about uh, rider training? Is it good enough? Uh, I, w- I only say that the driving or riding examination tu dia memadai. Tapi dia, sebab kita tengok kita punya driving test. Okay, the syllabus only want to test you, to examine you. You boleh handle the week or not. Yes. But there is no component to examine you. Are you qualified? Are you are you a qualified safe driver? Do you have the skill? For for example, I'm not talking about uh, 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 what you call defensive driving. Defensive driving tu memanglah jika siapa-siapa nak pergi defensive driving, tak lagi bagus. But sekurang-kurangnya, they must have the hazard perception training. Or hazard perception examination. Mm-hmm. Hazard tu ialah bila kita bawa bawa kereta, bawa motosikal tu, biasanya kita akan nampak banyak hazard. Ada hazard, ada strong hazard, ada ada immediate hazard. Tiba-tiba kereta keluar. Macam hari-hari tu yang dek- yang kereta tu masuk bawa loli tu. Uh-huh. Saya tengok video su- footage tu sebab yang yang motor yang kereta tu dia laju. Dia tak nampak itu hazard. So, jika kita boleh nampak hazard dan uh, lebih awal satu satu saat, mungkin kita hmm. tapi adakah kita punya driver mampu or quite uh, capable to identify the hazard or not this okay. Sampai ada ramai orang kata itu hazard dia tak. Saya buat sample lah. Brake light. Okay, kita tengok brake light saya ada buat exam uh, uh, automatic uh, AI exam. Saya bagi tahu saya punya belajar buat Uh, has a person. Oh, yang brake light kata dia bukan. Kenapa bukan? Dia kata setiap saya tengok dah, dah biasa tengok. So, bermaksud ramai kita punya driver tu dia tak erti tu yang kebahayaan tu apa. Jika dia tak tahu oh, dia, dia tak, the brake light is not a hazard to them. It's a hazard but it's not But they, they don't identify it as a hazard. No, no. no. Sebab yang saya punya examination That is so strange. Uh, so, so that's why kita And these are university students. University students. Oh my god. Okay. So so that's why saya kata rasa tu kita punya exam driving exam uh, curriculum tu mesti include at least one component nak uji mereka sama ada mereka ya uh, peka kepada hazard atau tidak. No Kemudian, wonder they using hazard light and they don't understand why it's dangerous. Yes. Uh, macam lubang jalan uh, yang berlubang tu. Hmm. So saya dapati yang saya punya pelajar motosiklis tu hmm. mereka kurang peka yang fixed object dan lubang jalan. So Itanya mereka so that's that's why saya punya training tu dia bukan exam tapi dia buat banyak kali saya sponsor by Patron a few years ago saya dia kata satu semester you datang sudah dua puluh kali okey lah pelajar dekat saja so hmm. dia datang dia buat tu then we see that is an improvement so saya rasa tak ada seorang satu orang pun nak uh, involve in accident jika dia ada peluang internet hmm. cuba sedaya web hmm. so that's why hazard perception boleh membantu kita untuk lebih peka untuk mengelakkan diri daripada terlibat dengan kemahiran jaya. Selain daripada sama ada kita tahu macam mana pegang sebab 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 saya guna eye tracker uh-huh. okay, masa exam tu uh-huh. nak tahu dia tengok mana uh-huh. ah, tapi saya dapati mereka tak berapa tumpu pada break light sebab eye tracker tu akan bagi tahu saya tadi tu dia tengok mana dia tengok berapa lama jika you tahu itu hazard you akan tengok lama sebab you nak tahu faham apa tu hazard supaya you tahu you punya strategi macam mana nak elak uh-huh. tapi bila sampai ke so bila dalam dalam senario tu dia tengok kat mana sebenarnya dia tengok what they looking at dia tengok other things lah like what Mm, uh, uh, advertisement, maybe, or some other things attract their make up, make up their attention. So this is the part kita mm. kita kurang. So this is some not something new. You go to Australia, you go to Japan, mm. okay, you go to Canada, do. Mm-hmm. This is a compulsory uh, component. You must still lose. Bukan kata you parking nak belum okay, itu okay. Tak cukup. Jika you fail at the hazard perception test. Macam mana? How do you conduct the hazard perception test? Okay, it's a simulation. Kita dah buat video. Kita rakam video driving kita tadi. Lepas tu kita uh, show in the TV. Ada eye tracker. Okay. So, check di mata tu. 
ada ada mouse kita kata jika ada hazard kita takut dia tipu kita so i try ke akan bagi tahu kita dia tipu tak tak tipu at the end tu kita dapat result tu kita akan faham dia ini peka kepada hazard tu lepas tu kita akan bagi dia tahu lah eh uh, 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 ali you okay tapi you tak peka tu you tak peka tu okay so that's why dia tahu lah oh macam tu dia akan remind lain kali bila dia bawa kereta tu dia akan tahu benda-benda yang itu hopefully uh, sampai hari ni dah 2 tahun dah siapa saya pun pelajar tu so, masih so, hidup lagi so dah. apa nama ceritanya so because you see uh, how would you conduct the test in real life we we cannot conduct the test in real life tapi habis kat Australia dia kata dia ada hazard. oh itu exam lebih kurang sama mereka hmm. lebih kurang sama pakai simulation yes, macam tu juga yes 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 okay so how how do you conduct that exam hmm. in in real life uh, Like what I said that we have the the footage, mm-hmm. uh, live videos. Lepas tu kita bagi, kita tahu dia punya answers. Dia dah ada more the answer. Dekat sek- berapa second tu ada apa hazard sebab ini tu. How many how many different variants do you need to have? Uh, usually the videos, the footage cannot be too long. No, no. How uh, many how many different footages? Yeah. The reason I tanya ni senang aja because mm. kalau you pergi driving school mm. and there's only one available test footage, <laughs> then the like, the cikgu akan tunjuk test footage tu, dia akan tunjuk, okay, oh. saat ketiga, kau kena tekan, saat ketujuh, kena tekan, yeah. nak No, we have many. We pick up, we pick up randomly. Okay. okay. Sebab nak buat footage, footage tu, dia tak susah. Hmm. Uh, kita boleh buat banyak. Hmm. Tapi memang semua video tu, kita ada more than answer lah. Hmm. Supaya akhirnya, at the end of the test, kita nak tahu dia punya markup. Right. Uh, so, kenapa tak ada test tu? Saya <laughs> bukan nak buat. <laughs> kenapa tak ada? <laughs> saya bagi tahu you, nanti saya jadi, jadi policy maker lah. But how, how is it expensive? No, it's not expensive at all. Saya beli air tracker tu, saya beli lah. Tak sampai seratus ringgit. A few years ago lah. Tak sampai seratus. TV tu bukan TV macam mana. TV yang biasa tu. Mm-hmm. It, this is the only uh, equipment yang saya beli. And the mouse and the computer yeah, lah. Dia punya set up cost is very low. Seriously. It's very low. So sekarang bukan kita nak buat e e driving, okay? Tak payah pergi tak ada orang test, okay? I say that this is the good time for them to introduce this system, mm-hmm. okay? What's good? Mm-hmm. Hopefully policy maker dia dengar lah. Mm. Cause um, ya lah satu driving school, dia orang nak student lulus lah. Kan? Tapi the training memang not really focus on um, macam yang cakap lah, you know, how to handle real life situation. So how How ah? How do you improve that? Ah? Because see, for my, for my own mm. children, mm. satu saya nak tahu dia macam mana rasa bila bawa kereta ni ada limit, mm. right? So obviously tak saya tak boleh ajar, it's dangerous, right? So for me, I bawa dia orang bawa go kart lah. Ha, so bila you bawa go kart, then you boleh rasa what it feels like when it's on the limit. We have to brake really hard when you turn and you lose the tail, you know, you drive a car and all that. But obviously that's something yang not available to everybody, right? So how do you uh, how do you do that? How do you make them have that understanding about satu their limitation and the car's limitation hmm. and I don't know I don't what what is the what is the behavioural issue yang paling besar dekat situ yang menyebabkan yeah. orang bawa pick up truck at 170 km per hour in the rain. So I when you see that you wonder you don't know your limitation or you don't know your vehicle punya limitation or are you just stupid? I I, I think uh, there are many reasons. One of the reason is that Uh, somehow our driver is quite positive. Oh, quite right. Positive. Okay. I always think that that this thing won't happen to me. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, we, are, we are very positive here. Okay. 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 Positive. It only lasts for a few seconds. Uh, lepas tu dia tak lupa. Lalu, uh. The other thing we can do is like okay, in many country in West in, in developed country, we got there's a program panggil GDL, Graduate uh, Driving Driver License. Maksud ni, kita ada 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 outlet. Dia bukan saja. Tapi bila you masih the probation tu, you tak boleh bawa kender. You have to be accompanied accompanied by an adult. Yang memang dia qualified to be uh, adult to guide you. So jika you ditangkap, you probation, you tak ada orang bawa bawa sekeliling so, 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 orang saja tu. Ya, itu salah satu kesalahan. So this is the program they in, they, they they implement uh, to make sure that ke okay, yang knowledge driver tu dia akan di guided or the so, like, parents make tu supaya dia faham macam mana. Uh, I think this, this is something we can consider. But of course, I know that if one day kita implement this, too, mana memang ada banyak orang akan complain sebab leceh susah dan sebagainya. But I think no. The thing is that if you look at the statistics, yang banyak kematian tu orang muda. Like for example, motorcyclist tu hmm. kita pernah uh, uh, suggest to government, why not we increase the minimum riding age from 16 to 
Sebab statistik bagi tahu kita, jika kita increase only for 3 years, kita boleh decrease 25 to 30% of the motorcycle fatality. Kira tu, 35 to, uh, 30, to uh, 25 to 30% tu, darab ramai banyak ni awak. So, so how, how does that work? Eh? Memang kita tengok that between the ages of 16 and 19, a lot of them are involved in yes. accidents. Yes. So, maksudnya, that group lah, 3 tahun dah dia, dia boleh sampai of the 100%, of the, 100% of the motorcycle fatality in a year. Wow. Okay, so, if you if you increase, then means that okay, dia akan kurang. Of course, at the time, the government at the time tu, dia tak agree. Banyak isu, dia kata umur tu ram. So, jika you tak bagi tu, mereka bawa umur tu haram tu, tak ada license tu, under accident, tak ada insurance tu. Kata dia. So, akhirnya dia tak jadi. Tapi GDL tu bukan untuk driver saja, Dia termasuk riders. You tak boleh seorang. You bawa motorcycle, masa tahun first year tu, you mesti bawa seorang yang jaga you, supervise you. Motorcycle ada orang lagi bahaya daripada buat seorang? Uh, tapi lebih baik daripada satu orang tapi dia tak tahu. Tak tahu macam mana nak nak to, to drive safely on the road. I wouldn't want to be at the back seat of a... Tapi biasanya, tapi biasanya yang GDL itu, you prefer to kereta lah. Sebab kereta okey lah tapi kalau rider saya tak nak. Kalau anak saya buat pun saya tak nak kereta. No thank you. That will be a no thank you lah. Right. Okay, so uh, macam what about what about um, uh, the technology, new technology yang ada sekarang ni untuk motosikal kan? Has it, and untuk kereta, has it shown? Macam we had things like the seat belt, hmm. right? Was there really a big jump in safety? So when we introduced things like ABS, was there a big jump in safety? Ada nampak ke? Yeah, nampak. Nampak. Uh, in fact, not much we can do for motorcycles. Kita macam kereta tu, kita boleh buat mana-mana. Kita ada airbag, satu dan sebagainya tu. Okay, but that more thing we can can be done. But for motorcycle, not much. Okay, maybe we can do some uh, design a better helmet. Okay, but when we design a better helmet, means that it's more costly. Okay, there's a limitation. So buat tu tak boleh mahal buat motorcycle ni. Okay, so sampai ada orang kata uh, ada jacket, jacket ABS. Mm-hmm. Okay, for motorcycle. Jacket uh, ever. Tapi saya rasa itu akan tak akan berjaya for the reason. Mm-hmm. Bila kita kata safety device tu, kita ada port, ada passive dengan active device. Mm-hmm. Yang active, yang passive ialah macam airbag. Mm-hmm. You tak perlu kata kita susun betul-betul, lipat betul-betul. Is that for airbags. Whether you look, you know or not, that is that. Always ready to protect you. Mm-hmm. Tapi yang uh, passive tu, it's just like, like seatbelt. Jika you tak pasang, tak protection. Mm-hmm. Okay. Same thing like, if you talk about helmet pun, pun active juga. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jika jacket, saya tanya lah, motorcycle dia ada jacket tu, Jangan kira dia mahal atau, atau, atau pun murah lah. You pakai. Dia kata tak pakai. Okay. Seat helmet tu dia pakai. Uh, I always have asked a question. Macam seat belt. Kenapa dia tak nak pakai jaket? Sebab leceh. Dia tak kali nak pakai. Jangan kata pakai jaket lah. Pakai vest pun tak boleh sustain. Mm-hmm. Betul ke? Sampai kita bagi dia free vest tu. Satu hari terjumpa. Dia pun malu. That means that okay, tak tahu pergi mana. Atau hilang pun tak tahu. So that's why. Kita pun ada masalah ialah, dia kita pay uh, possible uh, device tu, dia sa- tak boleh sustain. Okay, sebab you have to put effort. Leceh. Okay. Uh, so that's why bila kita tengok ni, not much things we can design specifically for motorcycles. So that's why I always say that, that's just how I say that. Buat motorcycle leceh kan you tu, hmm. itu paling sesuai. Hmm. Tapi dia m- mesti datang dengan kos lah. Tapi saya rasa kos tu kita boleh absorb. What would be like, uh, macam highway, north-south highway, hmm. should you have a motorcycle in also? Mesti. Kita punya masalah sekarang. Hmm. Terutama adalah dekat highway. Okay, I say that since day one, bila kita highway, hmm. we make a wrong decision. By right, we should allow the motorcycle to go into the highway. Okay, you tengok China. China tak ada. Motorcycle tu hanya untuk short distance saja tu. Highway tak boleh, tak ada. Okay, tak boleh buat. Jika kita, tiba-tiba kita, kita, kita ban saja, mesti ada ramai yang marah. Okay. So, but the thing is, now the problem is that, okay, you tengok yang, yang highway tu, plus, no, sorry, uh, plus highway. Kita ada dua lane ataupun tiga lane. Tapi yang ni design according to the car standard. So, jika kita tengok, adakah kita punya jalan di Malaysia elok? Saya kata elok, tapi dia kurang memuaskan. Why I say so? Okay, elok dan kurang memuaskan macam ni konflik. Why I say? Because we follow the standard of British. Tapi yang standard tu di design bukan untuk motorcycle. Untuk kereta. Tapi that's why saya kata tak ada kepada our motorcyclist. Kita have 50% of motorcyclist. 
So you think about yang sekarang ni yang yang plat uh, plat punya for example plat lah dia punya tu dia ada dua lane atau tiga lane. So motor saya nak pergi mana? Dia tetap dua saja. Satu satu ialah joint. Risky lah so, emergency lane. Kita dah panggil dia emergency. Hmm. Itu bukan itu bukan motorcycle lane. Hmm. So emergency lane ialah bila saya terlanggar ataupun kereta saya rosak tu temporary start stop that. So ada banyak cases, ada banyak case ah. Ha? Motorcycle dia tak tahu sebab dia jauh dia lurus dia lost the dia, dia punya concentration. Sebab dia kita drive tu on road tu kita based on kita punya jangkaan. Betul ke? Kita jangka salah tu kita masalah lah. Hmm. Sama juga bila motorcycle itu dia bawa tu dia kata itu a motorcycle. Hmm. Dia tak 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 jangka ada kereta dia. Right. Banyak kes macam itu. Ya. Yeah. So it, itu uh, typically kalau you bawa uh, motorcycle yang boleh Uh, maintain 120 km or above then you join traffic mm. if you bawa motorcycle yang tak boleh maintain then you stay on the left mm. that's just typically how you do it lah eh? uh, we have to make it very very clear mm. uh, jangan tak boleh buat anggapan mm. so it's just like now kereta motor driver kata ni motorcycle kereta uh, motorcycle lane conflict mm. so our policy maker cannot diam lah they have to stand up to, to tell us itu aku macam mana soal? Uh, ada tak ada siapa-siapa buat study ke on how people acceptance kalau tukar polisi tu? Uh, susah nak tukar. You nak tukar jadi motorcycle ke? No, no. What I mean is ban motorcycle daripada highway. Hmm. Kuasa kalau tak ada study tunjuk people punya willing to accept acceptance level ke macam mana then? No. If you ask, if you ask motorcyclists that, they are not willing. Definitely their answer is not willing. No people like someone to create a policy or Who to control me? I'm alright. Even though I know that this is something good, mm-hmm. but it's not. It's against my comfortables. But if you ask the car driver, they say better don't allow, because we or sometimes we suffer because of the motorcycles. Mm-hmm. Motorcycle not only give the safety issue, they put bagi masa congestion. But at, mm-hmm. at the the survey bukan hanya tanya ke motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the survey kena tanya semua orang lah, because That's the road is shared. And so kalau you tanya motorcycles, obviously motorcyclists will yeah. say no. No. Right, hmm. but tapi kalau you tanya car drivers, like you say, they might say yes. So there must be a balance, lah. If you tanya, if you tanya everybody, then uh, bukan because uh, like you like you point out, this is a political matter. Huh? It's a political consideration. Bukan je, it's not a political matter, but it's a political consideration. Bila you tanya policy makers, they they are not looking at it from a safety consideration. They're looking at it from a political consideration. Understand. So in in that mess, uh, if if that's the story, then you 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 need they need to see uh, the acceptance level. Okay. So that, if that, there is no study to show the acceptance I, I think, level, I think it's not like we must go to a conclusion. We want to maintain it or not, but if we want to see that, okay, do we need to make a change? Do we have problem now? We, now we have the emergency lane and other car in this setup, tada masal. The answer is no. Bukti from the road accidents cases too. Nah, bukti itu mereka tak sesuai. Mm-hmm. Okay, sebab dia high speed, okay, kereta semua kereta high speed. Jika ada sedikit perbalangan saja tu, dia akan akan mengakibatkan uh, kemalangan. So, okay, the question is, how many percent of the motorcycle accident happens on highways, and how many percent happens on surface roads? Of course, we we cannot compare number to numbers mm. because we can we we see that many motorcycle, not all motorcycle must go to the highway. Betul. Okay, mm. but now we can we want to see that if we learn from Brazil. Okay, even though they do it motorcycling later than us, but they come out one motorcycling punya concept which is very good. They mm-hmm. call it blue lane. Blue lane tu dia bukan apa tau. Tapi kalau mm-hmm. contoh tiga lane tu, kit lane tu between second and the fast lane dia buat satu tu. So pen bilu tu itu dia declare this is the blue lane dia motorcycling. Between the fast and the intermediate. Yes. yes. Sebab jika di dekat jalan biasa tu semua junction on the slow lane. You, you get my point. Mm-hmm. Nanti orang nak 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 turn into the the, the junction. That's why they make it on the. Okay, but they declare they put blue tu, tu sebab blue, warna biru tu dia is not a common color on the roads. So very obvious. And according to their statistic, because sebab mereka dah implement satu tahun dekat South Pole, dia punya mayo declare that during that one year, no fatality along the route with the blue lane. Accept the concept lah. Jika boleh implement bukan sahaja di jalan ini saja, tapi di highway. But why is this not talked about? I, I did mention many times in the newspapers. Clearly not, and I haven't heard about it. 
I I don't know. I didn't mention. Even I did mention once in 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 my presentation. I say Brulen. I say bagi dia videos YouTube. Okay, menunjukkan apa tu Brulen in in Brazil tu. So I think we have to think about this because this the construction cost even lower compared to inclusive or exclusive motorcycle. Dan dia cakap aja. Dia dia tapi dia declare. Dia declare. But the chart doesn't make it slippery. Yeah. Itu tak slippery. Itu bukan cat yang biasa tau. Cat yang special on road tu dia tak slippery. Kecuali yang yang contractor tu. I mean the yellow lines are slippery, yeah. the red lines are slippery. So what kind of paint that they using that makes it not slippery? It's not slippery. It's a special kind of paint, specifically to use on road surface. Ha, tapi yang orang pergi paint tu dia ada guna paint lain yang lebih murah tapi I don't know lah. Is it latex base or what is it? What's the material that they use? Because the you know the yellow lines they're yes. supposed to be untuk jalan juga tapi ha. slippery on rainy days and if you're on motorcycle. You nampak no, je. No, it can, it can, by right, by right, according to the standard, it cannot be. Cannot be what? Cannot be, cannot be like slippery. But like. the yellow line is slippery. Uh, it the red line is slippery and that but is... The thing is that if you use the standard one, mm. the cost is higher. But, but those are proper lines. I know, I know. Slippery, huh? You can use, but if, if you are, you don't know the, 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 the difference, it looks like the same. But they are not the same. Okay, uh, so, I mean, uh, you know the Damansara punya... Mm-hmm. I'm sure that one is proper because that's a very busy road, nah. Mm. It's a known problem area, mm. and that is slippery in the rain. Mm. Uh, so, macam mana you cakap tak slippery? I have not met any motorcycle who say that uh, is not slippery. So that's right. Uh. I say from scientific point of view, uh. we know that okay, when they want to uh, invent a kind of paint mm. specifically to use to paint on the road, too, mm. they have to follow the ISO ISO standard. Okay. Tapi the implementation do. Macam mana dia implement, ada siapa-siapa pergi inspect atau tidak tu, then what I, have, I, I cannot control. I have no idea. No, that's why I, I'm, <laughs> I'm pointing you to a road that uh. is known to be problematic, that is known to have multiple uh, changes hmm. to the furniture, multiple changes to the marking just to accommodate that problem. Uh, so I point out to that road. So I'm not pointing out so some obscure junction or ramp maybe, or whatever. Maybe I should visit the road segment you mentioned. Yeah. So from Jalan Duta, <laughs> in order for you to go to Damansara, mm. there's a big loop. Okay. From Damansara, you turn pun, it's a big loop mm. that goes down. Situ, they dah change dari pada yellow line biasa, yellow line tebal, increase the frequency of the yellow line, mm. uh, tukar red line on one side or something. I can't remember. That it's always changing from uh, amco into concrete into all sorts of things just to manage that okay. because if it's cold it could be other confounding factors like for example mm. you put mm. a tire condition but also the speed uh, uh, yeah I know, uh, I know. okay and, these and, are the, some uh, exceptions uh, 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 factors but you do, uh, as a motorcyclist i do ride motorcycle mm-hmm. in the rain i see that and i break. because it does feel and you go you know that it is if you break in uh immediately break too it will start to matter juga tak 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 this is just talking about normal riding you can feel the bike you know it's Because surface lain kan, jalan dengan cat lain lah. Mm-hmm. So, that's the thing lah. And you know, I'm just saying, kalau kalau macam itu pun kita rasa, and if you're painting it a long Along line like that, line. then constantly, uh, it might actually be safer because it's constant uh, friction value. Mm. Because here, you're changing up, down, up, down, up, down. That could be... Uh, so, I'm just wondering whether that is uh, a factor lah. You know? Because by right, according to the procedures, what after you, you mark your paint, You have to you have to examine the skid resistance. Okay, you have to make sure that the skid resistance at least at least must meet the minimum. Okay, but I don't know whether they they did or not. But meet <laughs> minimum means does that mean it has to be the same as the the? the yeah, lah. Here, no problem. Itu if you want to say if ah uh, betul tu, so sa akan lebih quicker at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Okay, tapi akhir 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 ni akan house tu dia akan kurang masalah. Okay, mm-hmm. but anyway, bila you dah buat anything tu on the root surface, mm. you must make sure that okay, they must uh, uh, meet the minimum requirement of the skid resistance. What skid the... resistance? Bang so jika you sampai tu, bila you atakan break tu, dia akan you punya stopping distance tu akan kurang daripada certain distance. Okay, uh, but itu, how do you test for yellow? Have to have to have to do it. No, but you can only painting across that. Macam mana you nak test? At the corner. Okay. Bila kita nak stack the skid resistance tu, bukan kita betul-betul kita nak ride. Hmm. Dia ada equipment. Kita letak tu, dia akan bagi bacaan. Okay. So, what what is the like coefficient, uh, friction coefficient that is true? When, when, is that the same as an actual tar surface? Oh, uh, Dia tak akan sebagus tu. We understand that. Tak boleh buat apa-apa tu. Mm-hmm. But, 
if you ask me what is a minimum standard, I can't remember first. Mm-hmm. Okay, but there is a minimum standard. They must make sure mm-hmm. that. Okay, someone juga went to RTD that too. We have to make sure that there's an evidence to show that generally over this core of road too, they have never see the resident too that turun sampai turun bawah the standard. That means that we have to. Do. So overall, you think the quality of our road maintenance is uh, contributing to the accident rate? Um, like you say, potholes is a real yeah. major problem for motorcycles. Right? Now, if, if you look at, there are three major factors contribute to road safety. Like we know that human play a bigger role, mm. the vehicles, and mm. also the road environment. Mm. Vehicle is getting smaller and smaller because. Mm. Vehicle uh, technology improving all the years. Highly tested. Okay, uh, but our environment, even tested. though it's not as serious as human behavior, mm. but I would say that okay, we are not doing good enough, enough uh, to protect not only the car but to protect the motorcycle. Mm. Uh, there are many cases. Uh, masuk uh, for hold to jatuh to terus mati. Yeah. Ada banyak tu. Okay. Then we have the question, uh, why we have so many potholes? Uh, it could be many reasons, and why I speculate one of the reasons is that maybe we don't have enough the paper management system to know how are we how frequent the route have to be paid. I mean, we've had cars for a hundred years. Surely that statistic is already available. No, the da- the data is keep on changing. What what do we need? What do what kind of input we need? We need to know the traffic flow. Jika satu dia traffic flow tinggi itu maksud dia punya hack akan okay. But the more if the traffic flow many a big percentage are the high vehicles. Mm-hmm. That means that we are need to make, to pay more frequency. Mm-hmm. So based on all this input, the climate we have uh, very mild climate. Uh, okay, uh, uh, there are many more than one, more than two or three factors. Uh, but all these factors, it go into the model. The model will tell us that how frequent we need to pay for those. Mm-hmm. But if you imagine that if the models is not updated, okay, if you use the old models, but you know that over the 20, 30 years, many things change. Okay, so if we don't have the good model, we don't have the mechanism, we don't have the good data, we don't have the updated data, then we, we have no idea where is our enemy. But do we at least have some sort of base model where we tell the government that, okay, uh, main arteries, federal roads, uh, this is how many years, mm. the last highways, this is how many years, state roads, this is how many years, rural roads, this is how many years. But you do sangat drop, sangat drop. Hmm? It's, just, it's just like human. Hmm. Human, even though we are same age, our health condition may not. Be, it depends on how do we live. But other at least other no, we, we need to acquire, suggestion. We need to acquire a more recent data from time to time. Perhaps maybe we are weak in this. But do we even have that basic data? Yang macam yes. cakap tu? Ada. Ada. Yeah. Outdated. 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 Okay. So, but now acquire this data hmm. is not cheap, and our road keep on increasing. And we have a good road if we compare to Vietnam. Right okay. now, cameras are so cheap. Why is it still yeah. so expensive? Now, uh, even you have a cameras, mm. you have to find people to. Of course, if you use AI, different story. Yeah, yeah. there's so many cameras by the roadside. Just I, I, I have them. no idea. Oh. Have no idea. Uh, so uh, the uh. thing is that if we don't have this data mm. and how we organize the data, then we will see that. Like I, I always question. Like a few months ago, uh, there is one route not far from. You UPM, should really push for this. From like. UPN. I said. I see a, a, a contractor paved the route. I tanya lah. Mm. If I don't mistaken, this route condition is still bagus. Mm. If I don't mistaken, there is one route not too far that banyak lubang. Mm. That question is that, mengapa you tak pergi sana? Dia kata, boss, kita dapat kerja di sini, kita batang buat lah. No, no. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. that's why I see that there must be something wrong with our management. Yes, I know that hey, we have we have many, uh, uh, we have, we have many, uh, uh, very long routes in the country. Now, many small to susah. That's why we need the data we need the good method to estimate. So mm. it, we cannot always say that, oh, kita ada banyak highway ke overloaded. Mm-hmm. If you know that, why why not you do something to 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 tackle this issue, to tackle the, the overloaded highway vehicles. And so uh, that's why I said that technically we have to do something. If we don't improve it, and if we just keep on asking money to solve the problem, then we are going to lose a lot of money. Also, there are some places, I don't know like, what's, what's going on wrong. Uh, Bandar Utama, I mean, I used to live in okay. Mandau. They have some uh, not curves. The roads go like that, and suddenly it changes direction. Mm-hmm. So you wonder people yang buat town planning ni dia tak consult dengan road engineers ke? Because you cannot have roads that have angles. Eh? It's just you have to have the radius, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and things like that seems to me like uh, prevalent the new townships lah, yes. especially right. Uh, mm-hmm. Older roads, mm-hmm. more natural curves tu ada lah. Macam mana tu? Is, is there a standard that they yes, set? Yes. Uh, when we want to construct a new route, mm. we must follow the standard. Mm. But even if we follow the standard, of course, I know that sometimes we may make some mistakes. 
So after we open the roots, after we constructed the root, before we open or after we open, we need to audit the root from time to time. So and that is a chance for us to pick up all this kesilapan. Hmm. Uh, but any, if you say that there is a there is a kesilapan dan sebagainya, mungkin mereka tak ikut standard dengan sepono ni. Maybe there is other constraint, but they cannot compromise because of the constraint. Because jalan tu kita guna, okay, it will affect our life, our tiada cerita our life. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say that okay, follow the standard first thing. Second thing is that the audit process must be continued from time to time. I think it's a question of priority lah. There's mm. no such thing as you cannot compromise on something, right? Betul lah. Betul. So if road safety is, if the road has to be the number one, then the houses have to be compromised. Like, I don't care. No, the, the, the you thing, cannot say that oh, my houses go like this. It cannot. You, cannot. You, you know that. Okay, when we say vision zero, ah, mm. orang semua orang they akan misinterpret. They kata, oh, you nak pasang something sampai tak dramati. I think this is something wrong. Mm-hmm. But vision zero is the vision, ah, maksudnya semua orang saya tak kira you siapa. Jika you are the contractor tu, you mesti buat dengan 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 carefully tu untuk pastikan tak ada orang akan seperti kemalangan. So means that all people in society they play their role either to solve the problem or at least they don't want to contribute to the problem. I think this is the spirit. Hmm. So but when we want to improve implement vision zero in Malaysia, uh, everyone is saying that um, government have to do something supaya kita tak ada accident. Okay, just hmm. just before we end and and part one. Hmm. I just want to maybe have a clarification that's me. So because clearly motorcycle is contributing a lot. Yes, no doubt. So what is the percentage of deaths on motorcycle versus in cars? How many percent is it on motorcycle? How many percent in cars? Okay, if you talk and about... And if you hmm. just look at the car numbers, are we still as bad? Okay, so 6,000 plus, 4,000 dah diambil oleh motorcycle. Okay. Tinggal 2,000 saja. 2,000 tu bukan untuk kereta saja. Kita ada buses. Kita pun buses pun ada banyak masalah. Okay. So if we if I not mistaken, uh, car fatality, sama ada driver or occupant, is around like twenty five percent. So if they have about fifty percent, means that they only half. Mm-hmm. But most like they have, they have they give that sixty percent. So car driver fatality is control, right. is control, but can be reduced. So what's the is there still is it, are we one point something already there or? If you just look at car, if you isolate this motorcycle, is what is our death rate here? Or if we, is it can, if we can remove all motorcycles <laughs> from our road, though, of course, I don't. I think that is quite impossible. No, we we will. No, no, no. As as the as a mental we, exercise. We, we will have a big jump or big improvement in road safety. Okay, okay because okay. we have the. If we look at our roads, we route design for, that follow the standard for car. Like in 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 uh in Europe, some countries they had a special motorcycle untuk beginners ah, yeah. with with very small power output. Mm, uh, the e-bike. No, no, even so, motorcycle biasa, okay, more okay. pets, whatever. Okay, okay, okay. Reduce power, you know. Mm, uh, mm. uh, with reduce whatever lah, reduce mm. power lah, basically. Yeah. Mm. Uh. Uh, is there something that is practical? If you at least must have motorcycle. No, I I think. Uh, once upon times, uh, I can feel that like our policy maker want to uh, introduce, but of course, uh, as an academician, I always have a view that you know we are not ready for that. Even now, we only cannot solve more cycle problem. If we in- allow them to use e-bike or scooters on the roads, their performance is not the same like. So they can buat kan dia 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 dapat nak kahwin tu, then we will have more problem to to solve. So the thing is that we should go toward homogeneous. What what about uh, making uh, ABS mandatory? Would that have any kind of impact on motorcycle? No, motorcycle you have ABS, tapi you tak ada protection, tak ada structure protect you. So you akan jatuh. Okay, jatuh tu mungkin belakang ada kereta sebagainya tak boleh. But if you go, if you go to China, but wouldn't it even help ABS mandatory ABS on motorcycle? I I won't say no. But I speculate is marginals. Marginal. Marginals. Marginals. Unless we just like we follow China's. China too, they have the more separate lane. Okay, there's a lane. The Katlaram too has unto bukan clear. If we can do that, I say okay. Okay, we can. The problem can be controlled. So it seems that motorcycle ni memang masalah besar lah. Macam mana macam mana pun nak kena manage juga masalah motorcycle ni. So I think kat situ kita berhenti untuk part 1 ni. Part 2 kita akan look at uh, current technology and apa cara kita boleh gunakan untuk mengurangkan kadar kemalangan itu.
Okay, selamat kembali ke Fakir Fikir bahagian kedua episod 5 Dan uh, sekarang ni kita nak masuk ke satu uh, ruang perbincangan yang uh, Kalau you tengok saya punya channel sendiri Fast TV Selalu dengar saya cerita pasal benda ni iaitu teknologi baru uh, Pemanduan ataupun bantuan pemandu yang uh, boleh mengurangkan kemalangan Ataupun boleh meningkatkan keselamatan dan juga mengurangkan penat dan stres. So, macam mana, Prof? What do you think of this new fangled technologies? Uh, especially, I think yang paling common sekarang yang kita ada is adaptive cruise control. Uh, some people call it active cruise control. Uh, and some adaptive cruise control and active cruise control uh, are limited to a minimum of 30 km per hour. Some will go down to crawl speed. And then some also has the addition of lane centering or lane tracking. So maybe that's 2.5, maybe people say this is 2.0 but it's basically level 2 lah. Level 2 tak boleh lepas tangan lah macam mana-macam mana pun. So what's your thoughts on that? I think it's a new technology to ease our driving uh, driving load to is something good and good. Uh, sebab ada banyak case accident dulu sebab terlalu letih mm. for long hours. Mm. Especially for the commercial vehicles. Mm. Say like lolly and stuff. Mm. They 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 have they have to work for long hours. Mm -hmm. So I think we by having this, but they don't system, have to work for long hours. But somehow the system mm. here allows for it, lah. Yeah, but uh. they do. Uh, of course, then we have to know that. Hey, Jika you gonna uh, cruise control do. Uh, if accidents happen, the driver have to bear the responsibility. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's that. We cannot break. Oh, that that is we try to okay. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you go for that, that autonomous vehicle, to that that's different story. Mm -hmm. Okay, many things we have to consider. Mm. Let's consider different syllabus. Technically, then legally, there are many issues. Let, let's leave out autonomous. Look, kita cerita tentang adaptive cruise control saja. Mm. Do you think that is something? Ke saya berpendapat ini satu teknologi yang kalau is up to me, I would like to see it mandatory. Kerana uh, ianya memang boleh membantu mengurangkan stres. And to me, that is a factor that that contributes to uh, road safety. We, I don't think we should make it like mandatory. Hmm. But why not? There are many cars that are other. Why not make it mandatory? Because it's it's cheap already. Prodo can offer it even in their cars. We still have many old cars on. No, 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 no. We don't. We you don't only mention about the new car. Uh, obviously, okay. this is this is new. Oh, we can we can backdate laws. That's that's not. Okay. If there's the, I don't have any evidence to show that uh, the auto cruise control mm -hmm. is safety issue. Until now, mm -hmm. so that's why if people, if, the, if the policy maker want to make it mandatory, I have to say seriously, okay. And I I know that I I'm I also use autocross mm -hmm. uh, my car, mm -hmm. so I feel like very comfortable, mm -hmm. especially when I drive for a long long distance. Mm -hmm. So it's very helpful. So that's a bit relaxed. Uh, but the thing is, uh, we have to make sure that okay, you, and even though you are assisted by this technology, mm -hmm. you feel easier. But easier means that. Doesn't mean that you have to relax. You you get my point not? What does that mean? It's just like okay, it's just like you berperang mm -hmm. you bawa senapang tu. Your enemy will come anytime. Better macam tak ada do you relax aja. You can the the same thing here mm -hmm. happen here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, no, you still have yeah, to. Yeah, obviously sure. you have to. Yeah, to you're, you're more relaxed like lah. human human being. Uh -huh. If long hours you feel like you're more relaxed though, mm -hmm. you punya alertness will will be become low will be decrease. Mm -hmm. I think this is something we have to have we have to keep in mind the cross uh, auto cross uses mm -hmm. this one thing but of course i say that i don't have any scientific evidence mm -hmm. to say that this is the this will give a negative negative impact on safety mm -hmm. so that's why i said that my conclusion is that yes why not but whether policy maker want to make it mandatory or not so there are no it. studies on the impact of that on, on safety road safety anywhere in the world uh so far i budget any paper specifically to examine the impact of uh auto cruise control mm -hmm. autonomous vehicle Rabai. And and and, kenapa you rasa tak ada orang buat kajian tentang the by, 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 it, by, by the natures of the product, mm. dia tak ada bagi any side effect, direct side effect. What I mentioned just now is indirect side effect. What's the what, In, indirect? It means that this something like mm. for example, kita makan panel, dia berkesan sakit kepala dah tak ada. Mm. Tapi we understand, we must understand that over consume, it will give you side effect. Okay. Betul ke? This is something that is not, it won't come immediately. It won't come directly, but it will come after some time or after you come, go go beyond certain level. Okay, so this is the thing we have to remind that you, you get my you get my point. Uh, this is the only thing. I, but but why are there no studies? Eh? Why why do you think there are no studies? Is it? Is it uh... I, 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 I don't know. 
Okay, so when study do is up to the scientists what 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 issue they have, what they want to study. Okay, but so far saya tak pernah nampak baca. Okay, ada paper yang specifically on autonomous, but on autonomous vehicle because there is a big room for improvement. Uh, I think normally scientists 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 will go into a topic hmm. which has a uh, attract the public interest hmm. uh, because the value is. High. So autonomous macam mana? Uh, autonomous though, I think uh, the fundamental mental technology is there. Mm-hmm. But until today, we, mm-hmm. ne- we haven't seen any country that fully implement or widely implement. Okay, because of there are many issue remain unresolved. Such as Re- remembers a numbers of year ago, mm-hmm. Google mm-hmm. must they test the longest or after that, the the oh, one with Uber. Yeah, Uber. They stop for so what? Mm-hmm. Okay, because mm-hmm. they realize that there are so many weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Make people overcome like it. Mm-hmm. But if we look at our country, most of the autonomous vehicle test to dia buat dekat, okay. But tak banyak buat dekat sini. Kita punya banyak perubahan. Like road structures mm-hmm. tak sama. Kita punya road furniture tak sama. Yang paling masalah banyak motor cycles. Mm-hmm. Mas, dia, dia macam AI. We have to give input to the the model, to the otak tu, mm-hmm. to know all kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Then the, the otak tu mesti belajar learn. Mm-hmm. Baru di sini. Mm-hmm. But the thing is that if we come to here, we have many many more cycles. Are we going to make sure how how are we going to ensure that young model developed by overseas uh, by the the, the, the developed country can be used in our country? So that's why I can say that okay, we will see that if we the deal we still want to implement, we have to go through a painful path. Okay, when there is when we come to a transition period from widely used to widely used. But until one, maybe one we pass the path, many people use it, then we, then we will enjoy. Mm-hmm. But the thing is that we can we know that even though we know that this is the path we have to come, we have to cross. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that kita mesti sabar dan bertahan. Sebab akan ada ramai yang ter, uh, akan lost their life in accidents. Mm-hmm. This is why I was thinking that mm-hmm. maybe as a transition, we look at, uh, at level two as something that should be promoted. So at least to get people familiar with the technology, uh, familiar with how you handle it. Because personally, when I drive a car with adaptive cruise control, mm. I vary, for example, the gap between the car in front and, and my car, according to the different, uh, satu, the different uh, ADAS systems. Mm. Some ADAS systems are suitable macam ini, mm. the way that it works. Some ADAS systems, they're a bit jerky, so I, I'm less confident. Mm-hmm. For example, the more expensive ones, say on the highway, I tend to ask for more distance. Mm-hmm. So if I'm on the highway, I will keep two bars, sometimes three bars, depending on the road condition. And I'm looking around, I say, okay, here a bit funky is get the tambah jadi tiga bar. But typically on the highway, I'm running two bar. In the city, I'm running one bar uh, distance. You know, mm-hmm. so that's 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 the thing. And of course. Uh, these are just things and then that that you we need to get people to understand because that I I rasa the transition to autonomous mm. will happen it's inevitable sure. there is no way to avoid it it's, it will happen it's a question of when it will happen lah so kita kena introduce the technology gradually kalau orang tak faham i remember masa car companies started introducing abs faham macam mana nak pakai it's a simple technology doesn't even require the driver to mod- modify the behavior but we don't know how to use it and when we go for driver training with car brands mm. when it comes to the abs punya exercise the instruction is always kick the brake pedal as hard as you can and try to break it that is how you should use abs like, oh you know mm. then once you've experienced it for yourself that you have to slam the brake pedal as hard as you can then you can see how the system works. This is, you know, if we don't talk about... Okay, we need to learn. Uh, okay. uh, of course, when we come to the level 5, we are, we are not in control. Up to level 5, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's, but that's we it. have to do a lot of local tests. Correct? Because I know. Of limited <laughs> okay. utility. Never mind, never mind. Uh, At least there's something. No, like, no, no. no the, the, the thing is that the, the, like. the policy maker, mm. they have to get ready to bring us to the environment that okay, one day we know that our environment our road environment is suitable and safe to use autonomous vehicle mm. so now I don't know whether you remember there is one time there is a car a car a driver drive the autonomous vehicle to Malaysia and he set for autonomous mm-hmm. and this become an issue police tu nak cari orang tu nak, nak kata you tak boleh sebab kita untuk you guna so there is an interesting question jika you bawa autonomous vehicle you are not the driver 
you are the occupant. Mm -hmm. Involved in it. The manufacturer. Has to you you read? Mm -hmm. uh, so, but we don't have the clear regulation. Uh, to me, it does not require any new regulation. Uh, That's but not but new this regulation. is only one example. Mm. Because uh, the other creator young where the manufacturer takes responsibility mm. when something happens. If you notice, about two years ago, Honda released the Inspire model with level 3 yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, in, in Japan. And if you notice, the price is different. Mm. The typical Honda Inspire would cost around twenty-five to $35,000, mm. but this one was $100,000. $65,000 go where? It's certainly not the software, it goes to insurance, right? So it's the car company, it was explicit in when you buy the car, there's explicitly it says mm. in the uh, uh, user manual and in the briefing, it says that when all preconditions are met, and the system is operation, it's called traffic jam pilot, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And traffic jam pilot is fully engaged, the car, the Honda will be responsible for anything that, that happens. That, that is good. That is right? good. Okay, we shouldn't bear the responsibility because we pay for it. Right. So so the, the thing is that it's not to me, it does not actually require any new regulation. Because as it is now, mm. we are not responsible mm. for mm. damages. The insurance company pays for it, we pay insurance. Mm. If there's a death, then yes, then I'm personally involved. Mm. Right? So if there's a death, then I'm personally involved. So if in the event of a death, yes, then this becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. right? In terms of accident, yes, sir, then... Right? Uh, so I don't know how they're going to manage the death issue. Lah. Mm. Uh, maybe some kind of monetary compensation has to come into play, lah, and just, just for payment. But uh, insurance companies uh, will be willing to take on uh, autonomous uh, driving system when the actual table shows it's profitable. Okay. Not, huh? But typically, that's, that's, all, that's all there is to it. And we know they're trying to do that because right now, if you notice, some insurance companies are trying to ask you to download apps to put onto your phone so that they can track your driving. Mm. Betul or not? Mm -hmm. yeah? That's all there is to it, right? Mm. For insurance company, it's simple. The actual table says, yes, I'm okay with it. So the moment the system achieves a certain level of parity to human competence, then it's already for insurance company, that's already a possibility. The moment it becomes more competent, it's a no-brainer. It doesn't but, require... Uh, anyway, mm. I think we need to go follow the the right uh, speed. Mm. We need to collect to collect more data. Data on? On how the interaction between autonomous and non-autonomous vehicles. That is why I was yes. asking you about other study. I know it's a level two, but there is a certain level of autonomy. Then why are we not looking at this and how it is interacting with you see okay i'll tell you a little example so when you're driving a car with level two mm. adaptive cruise control among the problems that you will notice is when the car in front of you moves out of the lane mm. or a car comes into your lane mm. so when the moment the car goes out of your lane especially in a system that's three four years ago then suddenly the car takes time maybe one and a half to two seconds to detect the car in front and as this car leaves, it thinks there's a reason for it to accelerate. Mm. And it accelerates so hard that suddenly, you don't suddenly, they can emergency break or you have to take over. Right? So when the car comes in, also the same thing, it will not see it. Okay. But I found a little trick. Mm. Right? So when you see a car sidling into your lane, mm. you turn the steering a little bit to the left, and somehow the car now sees that car. Mm. So I, that incident now is, for me, that's a little trick that I figured out how to mm, do. Mm, mm. So it's this sort of thing which I think, you know, you, you need to see, learn, have a study on the interaction between autonomous system and like, like you said, but you have to start now. We have to start now. And mm. I think you give a very good information, but we need to get to get to collect all more data for all sorts or different kinds of conditions. The, to me right now, the why, why we're not interested is because I see this whole thing is being used uh, by car companies only as a marketing point. It is not being used as a safety point. And this is why it becomes diff difficult and problematic because when they see it as just a purely marketing ploy, mm -hmm. then what's the study? To it's just a marketing thing of just saying stuff, right? Yes. But if you're selling this as a safety feature, mm -hmm. then you will ask people like you to so hey, can you conduct a study for us? But this so far, so far, there is no demand. And no, no, that's, why, that's why I'm saying to you, kenapa tak ada demand? It's because they're using it as a marketing ploy, although it has real safety implications. Okay, we, we, we need to, to have a, a strong support mm. financially mm. and politically mm. for us to conduct a big, big scale of this kind of studies. 
Okay, so <laughs> ah, no, no, from 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 uh, where I'm sitting, I would like people like you okay. to point out that this could potentially be a lifesaver. Now, the reason why I would like to see that, then car companies will see this mm. as a safety thing that they can sell, rather than just a purely marketing thing that they don't really believe in. No, the so the moment they do that, and they will come to you and say, "Hey, I need a study on this, lah." No, uh, the thing is that I I I, I like autonomy because mm. you can get rid of the human uh, behaviors. Mm. So when the human behavior been removed, you can see that okay, our safety problem will, be, will not become an issue anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course, like if you ask you, but ask me why not? I conduct conduct this study. Of course, I want, mm. but I need the a good sponsors mm. from the company. Okay. Of course, then we have many resources can be can be chosen. Mm. So of course, if someone say that okay, we have the money, we want you to do it. We do it. I have yet to hear a road uh, safety advocate say that this is a good safety feature, and that's the first thing. I'm we we, say. we 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 collaborated with many car manufacturers, mm -hmm. like for example, Volvo Trucks. Mm -hmm. So they spend money on us, mm -hmm. but of course, it's not on, on other issue. Mm -hmm. How are we going to improve the the issue between truck and the motorcycle mm -hmm. So we have, but not yet come to the extent that we get the money from the car manufacturer to find whether what is what we should do to increase the suitability of the implementation of autonomy autonomy i think if you say autonomous it becomes so difficult mm. but if you say just this level two then it's something else yeah we, we can go up ah, uh, level ah, by level ah. for, for a lot of it, autonomous is level five only mm. they don't even look at level four they have no real understanding of what level three means four mm. or five Right now, reality is level two. This is okay. My 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 door is always always open. Okay, mm. since we are now mm. in a TV show, mm. okay, it's always open. Okay, we mm. can do this kind of thing. No problem. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah, what, what's your take on fully autonomous? When will it happen? What's your timeline? It depends on our public and the policymaker attitude. Okay, whether we want it or not. For the car manufacturer, they are talking about business. Mm -hmm. If we are not ready. They have no point to come in. Mm -hmm. If our policymaker has no don't have the vision, they won't come in. If this case, if this is true, it means that we will take even longer, mm -hmm. okay, to uh, to introduce the use of motor. But we already have one company that's offering what they call full self driving. We can only buy it already, but although you cannot use it, they oh. don't allow you to use it yet. Mm -hmm. You can already buy it. But you you it's buy Tesla, it. You huh? buy it, but you can't use it. Mm -hmm. There's no more. No, no, I'm saying uh, that, that that technology is already existing with Tesla, uh, and you are already paying for it. So now the question is when they will allow for that function to be activated, right? Because this or the problem is already here; it's already landed, uh, right? The problem has already landed, but the policymaker is not looking at it, and I don't know whether road safety advocates are looking at it. It's, it has landed. It, no. It's here already. If you ask me, uh, am I confident on Tesla technology? Of course, I I, I have the confidence. Mm. Uh, but when are we going to implement? Then we have to ask. But, well, how? The, the, no, the reason why I say nobody is looking at it is because they are already offering it. Mm. Nobody is saying don't offer it. No. You see? Okay. No. If if we say that the law doesn't allow it, why did we not tell them don't sell this then? No, but what I understand about our mm. government, mm. when I say our government, it's not like the, the current government, mm. our government for a long period In general. Time, in general. So when they come to implement something new, mm. they're always worried. Mm -hmm. I, I understand why they worry. Mm -hmm. So they must get gain more confidence, mm -hmm. more evidence to show, to show that there won't, be, there won't be any problem to implement the policy. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that right mm. now, when Tesla offers FSD, mm. why is nobody telling them, don't sell that, we don't allow this here? They're already selling it. There are people who have paid for it. But you cannot activate the... That, 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 that's, uh, a, that's a whole separate story because you, huh? you know, no have control over Tesla. Uh, if Tesla tomorrow activate it, and then what? If you if someone, if police know that you are using the aut uh, autonomous function, mm. you, you are at fault. I, I, sure. <laughs> okay, but... But you can't police every Tesla. Okay. Now, what I'm saying is that you see how the government is so far behind mm. of technology, mm. right? There's already a company that is already selling that feature which you say is illegal mm. and nobody stopped them from selling it. Mm. Kenapa? Nampak tak? Nampak, nampak. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Is Memang the technology, mm. kalau you tengok FSD 12 punya mm. uh, all the videos, FSD 12.3 now, yesterday uh, Tesla announced in the US, every new Tesla delivered will have 12.3 installed mm. and every single car will have one, one month free of 12.3 FSD. Mm. And every single delivery must have a half an hour demonstration on F which means that that FSD system is now on wide release. 
It's no longer limited release. Every single car goes out with 12.3. But I believe, like for example, like Tesla, mm. since they are now you're, they are already in Asia, mm. I think they have to take the in- initiative to lobby the governments. Not, not, not the, the, the scientists. Yeah, they, 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 will, they will just do what they want to do. Tesla <laughs> will do what they want to do. Uh, uh, but what I'm saying is that mm. uh, as, as, uh, as a policymaker, okay. as you as an, as an advocate who advises mm. them, uh, what is your horizon in terms when it comes to this? Because if let's say um, tomorrow they go to Canada, FSD twelve will be released in Canada soon. Mm-hmm. Twelve point three, so every car wide release. How long before they go to Europe? They are already hiring uh, test drivers in Thailand, mm-hmm. which means they will already be testing the FSD twelve in Thailand. My guess they are testing already. Mm-hmm. Thailand is worse than us when it comes to motorcycles. But they're not in Indonesia yet, Tesla, so they don't have anything testing that. Mm. So they're testing in Thailand. The moment that goes into Thailand, and if they decide, ah, we'll release this functionality here, what are you going to do? Because you didn't say it's illegal to sell. Mm. And you didn't say it's illegal to activate. Mm. You're only saying it's illegal if you're caught driving it, you see? Uh, and there are thousands and thousands of Tesla now on the road. But I hope that one day okay, we can mm. use it Ill- uh, legally. That one, I think, that, like I said, that one, I think, will happen yeah. simply because mm. uh, they have the data. Tesla has the data, and they they have their own insurance company. Okay. The moment their insurance company is willing to bear responsibility up to whatever, yeah, I, I think it's good for it the is, it is, you for know, the insurance to bear the, the mm. cost. But this doesn't mean that uh, we allow them to 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 have the accidents. Uh, Nobody okay. wants to uh, Yeah, of course. Uh-huh. Okay, we can say, oh, that insurance cover too. Mm. Life is life. Mm. Insurance only keep pay us money, not life, okay? So that's why I say that, okay, if we want to implement this uh, mm. smoothly in mm. our country, then we need, uh, one is that we need more local data. Mm. We need to, uh, to uh, engage with one independent party. They are not representing the car manufacturer. They are not representing with the, the policy makers, mm. but they are fully focused on the technical part. Mm. So do we have, have a testing protocol already for that? We don't are have. we developing a testing protocol? No, we don't have. And then how are we going to do this? I actually don't have. <laughs> okay, but uh, of course, for 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 for, like for example, mm. in university, we, we are not going to engage me only. Mm. Okay, I'm I'm the road safety expert, mm. but we need someone from uh, uh from com- uh, autom- automotive uh, engineering. Mm-hmm. We need someone from mechanical engineering. Mm-hmm. So we can find the expert easily mm. to look at this issue. Okay. So if Tesla willing to give us a money and we have the com- good communication with the policymaker, we are happy to conduct the study to ensure that we get more data to prove that they are hundred percent safe to be implemented in our country. Then I think this will work. hundred percent is not going to be. Yeah, of course lah. To a, how many nines do you want? To a uh, young Momoskan. How many nines do you want? And the question is, how many nines do you want? No, I, I, 99.9 or 99.99 the highest, or 99.999. How many nines do you want? Okay, if you ask me, nothing is perfect. Uh, uh, my background is statistics. Yes. In the world of statistics, nothing uh, is perfect. You're chasing nines. Okay. That, yeah. But we want to see a significantly safe. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, what, what would that be? What would that look like? Okay, it, it depends on the confidence level you want to set. We, we can go for 99%. Okay, but not always good thing to have 99%. 99% means 99%. 99% that okay, this technology has no negative impact on the current non-autonomous vehicles, All right. particularly uh. on the motorcycle uh, safety. Because what I worry is they have tested the Tesla autonom- uh, the autonomous uh, function in their country, but they don't have many motorcycle players. Mm-hmm. So I have no ideas when they implement this in our country, mm. we have so many problems with the motorcycles. Mm-hmm. So whether they are capable to communicate, communicate okay, to interact with motorcycles or not, mm. I think this is what I'm more, most concerned. Mm. So then if I have a chance to test it, I will particularly look at all kind of interaction within the autonomous car and the motorcycles. The, the, the new one, the mm. new systems, let's say whatever that you're buying like in the last two years, uh, the graphic representation, mm. if it's uh, one of those better ones, it shows that it can recognize motorcycle. It can differentiate between motorcycle, car, van, and heavy goods vehicle. You can see the represent the graphic representation is clear. So it's just the question is whether when you have like ten motorcycles, twenty motorcycles, mm. how it will interact. I don't know. No, it is it, already able to like, recognize like the system mm. to auto count the traffic. Mm. Okay, so uh, I think this is my true experience. Experience. 
I always have a, some problem to detect the motorcycle for a main reason is that the motorcycle go faster, go faster than the car. Mm -hmm. So that's why if I use the normal mechanism, I have no problem to detect car, 100%, almost 100%, even for the heavy vehicles, 100%. Mm -hmm. But when I crack my head, hey, double detect. Why? Because of motorcycle go very fast. Well, this form of static position or? No, no, moving. It's a, it's a real traffic video. So the, the video is on a car? Yes. If you ask Tesla, you said, okay, uh, can, can your model differentiate this is car, this is motorcycle? I think they, there's no problem. Yeah, it does, it no, does. It's like I developed a model. To, Even the, the Proton X90 can differentiate. Can. Between Even I, I developed a model to detect, to know whether the human standing in front of me is a guy or or, 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 or lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are many dynamic cases. Whether Tesla model so-called is very intelligent, very powerful, it can detect all these things. Mm -hmm. Is there any exception scenario there miss up? No. Uh, we have to test. So that's why I say we need more local data. Not their data, but our data. Mm. Uh, we want to do it. First of all, I must have a autonomous vehicles. I think this is quite costly. Is it? Yes. It's not a million, so... Definitely, I cannot use my own money. Okay? No, no, no. I no, no, no. go and ask for trans <laughs> transport ministry. Come on, what, one car, one Tesla. So this point, is... point this way. Okay. Uh. Yeah, you, you, know, you, know my, you know you know my Ross. Uh. Uh, my Ross, by right, my Ross has a better position to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but the thing is that even you ask my Ross, for mm. example, okay? Mm. So that's why we need Tesla. If they love the market, this market, Malaysian mm. market, mm. I think they have to send out to offer, okay? For them, two or three car or five, even five car is nothing. Then, then we can do the things. Well, that's uh, a whole different, different story. Our, the relationship between Tesla and our government right now is a whole different story. Other story, uh, okay. they seem to be able to bulldoze all sorts of things that nobody else can bulldoze too. So we'll, we'll, you know. Uh. So that, that's why I say that, okay, we must have the intention. Mm. Public must have the interest. Mm. Then the manufacturer they have to play their role, mm. okay, so that they they can grab the market. If anyone of this party tada 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 interest to tada intention to, because we feel more more comfortable to use our own car, mm. okay, the car says it's okay I can drive the car, so that's why how are we going to change? Mm. It can be fast, it can be slow. It depends on kita punya culture. Okay, so there you have it, uh, autonomous technology. Uh, I personally uh, think that autonomous technology will happen uh, before the end of the decade. Do you think it will happen before the end of the decade? Yes, yes, definitely. So we both agree they will crack level 5 before the end of the decade. Because uh, interestingly, uh, there is a, a difference in opinion on what is uh, holding it back. Uh, some people say it's uh, about uh, detection uh, and some say it's about intelligence. Uh, Tesla is on the side of intelligence, other people is on the side of detection, and more sensors. More. I'm more concerned about custom. Uh, so that, to me, I think it's more about intelligence, lah, mm -hmm. your ability to detect local trends and whatnot. Lah. So that that is interesting. That's, that I think in before the end of the decade, and I think you're right, this will take away the human factor, and the human factor is, what, 95% or more than, it's the significant majority of the cost of accident, right? It's rarely technical, uh, very rarely technical. So let's see what happens. I'm a big fan of autonomous. Prof is also a big So let's see in the next few years what happens. Okay, sampai situ je kita punya perbincangan hari ni. Maybe uh, you guys ada idea sebab antara cadangan-cadangan yang telah kita dengar sebelum ni daripada kawan-kawan kita. Uh, nak ban motosikal pun dah ada kawan-kawan cakap kan. Of course, yang itu banyak backlash lah orang tak suka dengar sebab motosikal tu suka ke tak suka masih lagi satu mod pengangkutan yang economical, yang convenient, yang yang mudah kalau kita uh, kerja delivery ke kerja yang bergerak motosikal memang dan juga it's the cheapest way to move around, even cheaper than public transport in some cases. And kita punya transport policy ni a little bit uh, macam the Americans because slightly skewed towards the automotive industry because for two three decades kita ada maybe inordinate amount of focus on the automotive industry and that gave rise to promotions of getting more and more cars onto the road maybe as a measure of our development maybe as a measure of our success as a country uh, so we neglected 
public transportation for the longest time. Uh, but recently, ada some good movements. Uh, we've had two MRT systems. So the third LRT system is being built. The third MRT system is now under planning. Uh, these are all things yang akan dapat membantu kita uh, mengurangkan traffic. Because the, 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 it's not just about traffic. Kereta tu is one of the least efficient way you can spend your capital. It, it sits there for 22 hours a day. You've paid for everything but it's not being used. So public transport, you beli bus, bus tu jalan 8 jam, 10 jam and that is a more useful uh, way of utilizing your capital. So the car is to me, I love cars. Don't, don't get me wrong, I am a big fan of cars. I love cars, this is what I do. I drive cars every day, I test cars. Tapi realitinya, that's a very inefficient way of uh, moving mm. moving people and things around. Mm. So we need to find a way of sharing these resources. Public transportation is one way. Autonomous cars and this so-called robo-taxi is another way that could you know give us... Because the last mile connectivity is a major issue for for, for public transportation. And, and taxis is the best, tapi it's very expensive. Yeah, it's a very expensive way of doing things. Uh, so we'll see what, what happens because more people on public transport means less accidents on the roads because they see less cars on the roads. Setuju tak setuju? Comment kat bawah. Prof, you have a website that people can look at lah if you want to look at your research ke or some... You, you, okay, people, you can find my website. Mm. You just type in Google Road Safety Research Center UPM. Road Safety Research Center UPM. So all your, your research semua kat situ lah. All the studies semua kat situ. And if you want to contact Prof, you probably have a link kat situ. Email link, just... Uh, Share your, your opinion on uh, how we can improve because it is something yang uh, there is a road safety group dalam WhatsApp I join in WhatsApp and even kat situ pun the discussion seems you know seems going circular sometimes sometimes it's just unclear what we can do so terlalu banyak sangat masalah okay sampai situ video kita kali ini terlalu banyak dan uh, kamu tak like dan kongsi dan kongkong so this is a really important issue walaupun penting sangat sangat so tolong share banyak banyak kamu tak subscribe dan tekan butang lonceng sudah dapat maklum dan kita mohon naik video terbaru. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay.